Uji is one of the growing number of players in the Wacom Alternative game, providing affordable hardware for the starving digital artists that are surprisingly capable, albeit with a few caveats. I've looked at a couple different products from both Huyan and UC Logic, but Uji only popped up on my radar rather recently. Not many people are talking about them compared to the aforementioned brands, as well as Yanova and Bosto. And, in all honesty, that's a real shame, because based on my experience with the UG1910B, a 19-inch drawing tablet provided to me by Uji for review, these guys may be the leaders of the pack right now. The design of the UG1910B is what I would call utilitarian. It doesn't do anything to call attention to itself one way or the other, just a simple matte black casing with a glossy display. It's a fair bit thicker and heavier than the typical 19-inch monitor for obvious reasons, and sits a fair bit lower on the desk so it's easier to draw on. The bottom right lip of the display has a bunch of buttons used to control aspects of the monitor itself, but unfortunately the 1910 has nothing in terms of hotkeys. Although, nothing else does in this price range either, so that isn't all that surprising. There's nothing of note on either the left or right hand side of the 1910B, and on the back we have an adjustable stand with a release latch to prop the screen up at various angles, as well as bottom mounted DVI and VGA ports for video out. Sadly, there's no HDMI, which would have been preferable. There's also a USB port you plug into your computer, so it'll work with the pen. Speaking of the pen, the stylus itself is actually really nice, a tad longer and heavier than the previous pens I've tested from Huion and UC Logic. It has a design kind of reminiscent of Wycom's Pro Pen, with a barrel that slightly tapers out towards the nib, then extrudes sharply near the head, but it lacks the fit and finish of the more expensive Wacom, most notably from the rather ugly and uncomfortable seam that juts out a bit to keep the pen fused together. That being said, Uji does include two pens in the box, so that's pretty cool. Like every other Cintiq alternative I've discussed so far, we don't get an eraser on this pen. And just like the previous Huyan pens, this connects to what appears to be the same proprietary charger for power. Maybe it isn't so proprietary after all. But enough about the looks, how does the UG1910 actually perform? I can really sum up the 1910's performance in a single word. Impressive. To be honest, I was going into this review expecting this thing to fall a bit short. After all, I've gone through two of Huion's higher-end tablets with specs that ate the 1910 for lunch, and that failed to impress me. What could this dinky little TN panel tablet do to be any better than that, a product nearly $200 more expensive? Well, it doesn't do too much, but the one place it does succeed in is the only one that really matters. Pen experience. After struggling with the GT185, installing the drivers onto my Windows test machine was a cinch, not requiring any elbow grease on my end to get them to behave. I just ran the executable file and BAM! Fully functional tablet right out of the box. A far cry from every other Wacom alternative I've tried so far. It's worth mentioning though that I tested this on my repurposed old desktop I've been using as an HTPC, so aside from a copy of Steam and Chrome, it's running essentially a virgin install of Windows 7, not ever having any art, software, or hardware installed onto it. So that might be why I didn't run into any headaches. But a painless install is a painless install, and I was ecstatic to just finally install a driver and get started on one of these things, so kudos to Uji for getting this right, at least in optimal conditions. Drawing with the 1910 is really solid. The pen nib has a pleasant balance of resistance against the screen, and unlike the GT185, doesn't make an ungodly noise randomly while using it. It's actually pretty quiet. The default pressure curve was actually pretty comfortable, feeling similar to what you get out of the box with Wacom, perhaps a, maybe a bit more generous on the low end. Very rarely did I encounter instances where pressure registration would falter, no more than you'd get out of a Wacom, and even the lightest of strokes had little issue being picked up by the 1910. The only real downsides to using this tablet were ones I knew were coming as soon as I read the spec sheet. 1440 by 900 is an insanely low resolution in the world of 4K and retina displays we live in, and stretched all the way to 19 inches makes it even worse. Add to the fact that because you're drawing on the screen, you're getting a face a fair bit closer to the display on the 1910 than you would on a standard monitor, and pixels are even more easily noticeable because of this. This also adds the unexpected issue of eye strain, as staring at this monitor with this low resolution as intently as one does when creating content is like staring at a dense checkerboard your vision dominated by a sea of tiny squares. You're going to have to take breaks more frequently than you're used to to prevent headaches when using this thing. The other weakness from the display is that instead of using an IPS screen that is standard in almost every display around you today, the UG1910 uses a lower quality twisted pneumatic or TN panel. What this means in English is that you're going to get less accurate colors in an IPS display and 
more damningly in this case, far poorer viewing angles than an IPS screen. So colors are going to shift when you aren't looking at the screen straight on. Granted, this particular panel is in the upper echelons of TN panels I've used with solid horizontal viewing angles, but it's in the vertical where things fell apart, as TN screens usually do. Use the stand to set the thing at too extreme of an angle and colors start to shift drastically. And even when looking at the device rather straight on, whites would take on a more brownish yellow as your eyes went from the center to the top of the screen. If you're primarily going to be using this for black and white work, such as inking a comic, or don't need to be all that accurate with your colors outside of some rough eyeballing, this will probably amount to little more than an annoyance. But if your work is heavily reliant on coloring or painting, especially if you work in print, this could be a deal breaker. Overall though, I'm really impressed with the 1910. While the panel may leave a bit to be desired with its low resolution and mediocre viewing angles, it's completely unfair to hold these against the product because it clearly advertises these characteristics. They aren't flaws, but stated limitations with the hardware choices in order to bring the cost down. I knew I was getting a low resolution TN panel going in, and honestly, despite being a TN panel, it's better than I expected. In fact, if you're going to be pairing this with a low cost laptop, you're probably not even going to know what I'm talking about, because most low quality laptops use TN panels as well, so you're probably used to working within those limitations. However, where this guy really shines is in its pen experience. The drivers installed without a hitch, calibration was great out of the box, tracking speed was excellent, the default pressure curve felt great, and overall, this was the first antique alternative I've tested where I actually felt legitimately comfortable using this thing, it was no muss or fuss to boot. Fuji delivered one hell of a product in the 1910, far surpassing my expectations, especially with the last few tile displays I've tested coming with significant caveats. If you're working in black and white or do mainly line art, I can recommend the 1910 without hesitation. If you do color work though, especially print, I'd offer a more tepid recommendation, simply because the display tech doesn't lend itself to the most accurate coloring experience. Still, if you have another monitor to correct colors and just need a solid pen experience at a low point of entry, look no further than the UG1910. The only caveat to this review is that I've only been able to test this guy under Windows, as I lack the display adapter to hook this up to my MacBook Pro. Uji has a dedicated Mac OS driver, so it should work well enough, but previous antique alternatives I've tested have performed differently on OS X and Windows, so I'm hesitant to give Mac users the green light without taking it for a spin first, so keep that in mind before pulling the trigger. Honestly, this whole experience just makes me really excited to someday get my hands on Yuji's other pen display, the 2150. If we could combine the great pen performance here with the high resolution IPS display, that'd make for quite the compelling product, and the 2150 promises to deliver just that. Regardless, the 1910B is still a compelling product in and of itself. For the creative on a budget, there are a lot worse ways to spend $400. So, my name is Tommy Oliver, you guys have been watching Rebel Pixels, a channel all about empowering and impassioning the DIY creative here on the web. If that's you, if you live and die by your art, you need to hit that subscribe button below and join the rebellion. Every week I make videos just like this, whether it's technical videos like reviews and talking about gear to make you create the best art you can, or if it's kind of more personal and motivational videos, talking about my struggles I've encountered on my path to being an artist and how I can kind of help you learn from where I've messed up. Uh, this channel provides a lot of value for people who want to create on their own terms. So if that's you and you want to join the family, hit the subscribe button and uh, give this video a like if you thought it was good, uh, give it a thumbs down if you thought it sucked. And let me know in the comments below, uh, what do you guys think of Uji? What do you think of Wacom Alternatives? This is kind of quickly becoming my niche here on this channel. I've reviewed a bunch of them. I got a bunch more coming down the line. So definitely subscribe if you're interested in looking at all the alternatives you can get to Wacom products. So until next time, I'm Tommy Oliver. This is Rebel Pixels reminding you guys we might be indie, but that doesn't mean that we're alone. Catch you all next week.